Hi, welcome to Small Things Greatly. Today we're going to be making a chocolate trifle, which is quite good, and I have mentioned it on the other shows, so a few people had asked if I could do the recipe for this as well. Um, the other chocolates that we make usually are the molded chocolates or the, um, the different boxes and things like that. This is a real simple one. Um, it's very popular at parties, and I get invited a lot of places, and I'd like to think it's for my own little sparkling personality, but it might be just because I make a really good chocolate trifle. So this originally was called Death by Chocolate, but that sounded a little negative, so I now call it Chocolate Heaven. And it's got four basic ingredients in it, but you're going to be able to move things around and um, add what you like in terms of um, the candy bars and things like that. So you'll see that in a few minutes, and I'm just going to get started by making the pudding here. Um, and I use, um, I use fat free half and half just because that's what I had, but usually you just use the milk and you can make the pudding any flavor that you wanted. I do chocolate just because I'm a chocolate girl, but you could do this with butterscotch. You could do it with all different things. Um, you'll, you'll see once I get started what I'm actually doing, um, but it's, and how you could make it your own. So that's just basically going to be what it, the ingredients, the, um, the instructions that it gives you on the pudding box. So it's just two cups of milk or half and half or whatever. The half and half is what I always have on hand because it doesn't go bad as fast. And I also, it makes it a little thicker. Uh, the other thing that I add just to give it a little more oomph is some ground cinnamon. And I usually use like about a, a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Okay, we'll say tablespoon. And um, it just gives it a nice little flavor that people are always saying, ooh, what is that? So just going to mix that up. It doesn't take much. It's just going to go right into the fridge for just about five minutes. I usually use an immersion blender, um, which is a lot easier and quicker to clean up, but I actually had this out for something else. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and let it solidify while we're getting the rest of the things ready. So this is basically just going to be four layers um, of different things. So it's going to be some brownies, the pudding, Cool Whip, and candy bars. And then we're just going to repeat those four layers again. So usually in a bowl this size, I'll get maybe two sets of layers, so there'll be eight layers. So we're going to do that, but for now, I'm just going to put that aside. We've got this all set, so we'll get rid of it. And I had made the brownies ahead of time, but you could even get brownies that are already made up, like the little Debbies, and break those up. Um, you can get the pudding already made in a can, which doesn't taste too bad. Um, so it's pretty simple, and you can make this as tough or as easy as you want, but it's, it's, I think it's pretty easy, even if you're doing the ingredients yourself um, and making the brownies and making the pudding. It's still a pretty quick dessert to put together. And you can make everything ahead and then just put it together the day of or the day before. I like to do it a little bit ahead of time so that everything can kind of marinate, if that makes sense, and get all the flavors all joined together. I like using a pizza cutter just because I always have one on hand. And I'll just make these small. And they can still get broken up a little bit more too. So um, a trifle was made originally in England. And they were made, from what I understand, to use up old stale cake. So I just like the brownies because they're a little denser. But I've seen this made with cake that was soaked in Kahlua, which is not a bad thing. Um, so you could do it with cakes, and like I had mentioned, the butterscotch pudding. You could do like a vanilla cake instead of the brownies, and then do it all butterscotch or whatever you wanted. Um, you, everyone has their favorites, so as I've said, and as you know if you've seen any of my other shows, chocolate is usually my favorite, so that's what we're doing. We have the chocolate brownies already cut up. We have the pudding in the fridge. Uh, and I'm going to get the chocolate ready. And you can use just about anything for this. I like using score bars, which score bars or Heath bars, pretty much same thing. Um, and those you can even buy so that the pieces are already cut up and um, 
really small or you can just get the little can the little uh, candy bars that they give out at Halloween you can get those and then just crush them up um, same thing with these now I like using the Reese's cups you can make them as big or as small as you want for your pieces to me this is same way that you would chop onions and things like that but much more fun because you can take some samples and to me it's much better but that's just me so I'm going to add these to the candy bar layer and of course you can make that layer whatever you want some people like three musketeers or milky ways snickers i'm not too much of a peanut girl i like peanut butter but um i'd rather not have peanuts in there i don't want to have anything too too hard to bite into when you've got this. It's just kind of nice. I've, I've tried it with M&Ms, like maybe even just putting little, the um, small M&Ms on the top, but um, they just like the shell's a little bit hard and you're not expecting it when you have all that other soft stuff like the pudding and the, the brownies and the Cool Whip. So I try not to do too much of that. But like I said, it's all personal preference. I also, I like Butterfingers, so you can get the Butterfingers already, um, these are the Butterfingers Bites and then I just crushed those up. So I had already done it ahead of time. So these are already nice and small, but you could cut them up the same way that you would cut up the Reese's. And then, like I said, with the Heath, they come like this. These are the milk chocolate toffee bits. They also come with just the toffee bits. Yeah, bits of brickle toffee, so there's no chocolate on these. And then they also come in these little bars like that, which I love. This is one of my favorite candy bars, if anyone's paying attention and wants to send me something, Heath bars. Um, as you can see, I have enough, but you can never have too much. So this is what we're gonna use for our layers. And just gonna check on the pudding now. It should be ready, it only takes about five minutes, so let me get rid of this trash, because I'm so neat and clean. And um, we'll check on this, and it's actually already set. So it's pretty good. It only takes four or five minutes to do. And the bowls that you can use, um, I used to have a big trifle bowl, but it did break. But there's a footed trifle bowl. It'll have that foot on it, which is why it's footed. And um, they're usually about this high. So you could do it with maybe three different complete layers. And usually you want to use a bowl that you can see through so that you can see the layers on the side. And when you're putting the stuff in, it's pretty simple. You don't have to do too much with it um, in terms of making it look nice. And honestly, once it gets to the party, it disappears really fast. A lot of times when I go to parties, I'll try to make something different and people will be like, oh, but where's the chocolate trifle? So I said, but I make that all the time. And they said, well, look, it's gone. So maybe you should keep making that. So I do, it's simple to make. And like I said, you can make it ahead of time. So it's kind of nice uh, and simple to do. So, and you can adjust it for different holidays too. Like if you're doing it at, at Christmas time, um, instead of adding like the this candy sprinkles and Jimmy's, or not Jimmy's, chocolate sprinkles, I guess we call them, is more politically correct. Um, if you're using these, you could just use the red and green ones. You can do it for St. Patrick's Day or Valentine's Day. It's a really adaptable recipe, so that's, we really don't even have to write anything down. It's, there's really no amounts. I usually make one batch of brownies, but it lasts, sometimes there's a little bit left over on the brownies, which, oh, I wonder what we can do with that. Maybe I'll just eat it and make sure they're okay. So um, you usually can do just the one batch of brownies, and then for the Cool Whip, or the whipped topping version from Stop and Shop. Um, usually I'll get like a 12 ounce. This is the eight ounce. And um, this was all I had because I didn't plan enough ahead. I thought I had more because I usually keep this on hand. Um, so I made some Dream Whip. So together it's gonna be enough. But I would say for a bowl this size, one batch of brownies or like even one box of little Debbie brownies, um, one container of the pudding and you know, uh, and like I said, about 12 ounces of this is usually enough. But if you have extra, I'm sure you can think of something to do with it. So not a big deal. So let's get started. And the, what's, what we do for the first layer is usually the brownies or the cake. Because that way, in the old days, when it was the stale cake, um, 
you'd be putting the pudding right on top of it so it would make it so it was nice and um, not stale anymore. It'd still be stale, but people wouldn't know it. So I'm just taking these small little brownies that were probably, they just, you can see what size they are, not too, too big, just like this. Um, I'm just taking them and breaking them up even a little bit more so that when you break into this, and get a spoonful for people when you're getting a, you know, serving it. You, if you go all the way down, then you get like all the layers of things. So I try to spread it around and I try to make it so that there's enough on the sides coming up sort of, so that you can kind of see the brownies when you're coming. You'll, you'll see as we go along. And the other thing is because I've used this bowl so many times for this particular dessert, I know that it, I'm only gonna get the two sets of layers in there. So what I'll do is just use about half my brownies. You can kind of tell, you want to cover the bottom of the bowl with your brownies or your cake. I'm very lucky that my mom is a good cook. She doesn't cook as much anymore, but she always taught us how to bake and cook and it was something that I loved doing from an early age. Not as much the cooking for real food, but the baking was something I always loved. And um, she started a 4-H group with us and it was a baking group, so that was nice and it gave us a good excuse to make desserts. So one of the things she always taught us was to wash our hands and tie back our hair before we started. So I did wash my hands, but as you can see, I did not tie back my hair. So. Please don't tell my mother if you do see her. I won't have to be able to let her watch this show. Okay, so we've got everything ready and I need one more spoon. Try and do it so I'm not in my cameraman's way. Um, same thing on this. I'm gonna use about half of this pudding. So it's just gonna go right over this. And you're just gonna try and cover as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect but I'm gonna use about half of it. So the next layer is kind of the fun part and you don't have to do it in a certain way. Um, sometimes I'll add, a, because I've got more than one of the um, different kinds of candies, sometimes I'll just do one layer here, then put on my Cool Whip and do another layer. It doesn't really make a difference. It's all gonna get in there. So I'm gonna put about half of these guys for the little bits of Reese's. And the other thing I do is I get this stuff usually on sale after most of the holidays so that it's a little less expensive. Or sometimes the Dollar Tree will have like the Butterfingers um, in a little package of eight or 10, maybe eight, maybe six. Six, six little bars for a dollar, which is still a good deal and usually cheaper than this stuff. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of that on there. And then I'm gonna use a Cool Whip Or this, like I said, this is the Dream Whip that I use just because I hadn't planned ahead enough to actually have enough Cool Whip. And I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up, but you'll start to see the layers on the side of this. And you can kind of spread it around so that you can see that you've got different stuff. That one kind of covered it, but here you'll see that you've got different layers in there. And then the third thing I was gonna do was, we did Butterfinger Reese's, oh, and we didn't do the chocolate, bit, the, uh, the Heath bars. So we're gonna add a little bit of that, and then that's our first set of four layers. So right there. And then we just start again. So we're gonna use up probably most of the brownies. And you can see it's already about halfway up. Sometimes it gets so that there's you can't fit everything in, but we'll just do our best. You can add and adjust and use a little less or a little more of something, but like I said, I try to make this so it's kind of small and you'll be able to get a few bites in there. The Dream Whip, as you can see, is a little more runny than the Cool Whip would be. So that's why it covered up some of our, our good stuff on the side, but it's still gonna taste good. And since I live out here in the sticks and couldn't run and get more Cool Whip, 
we had to make do with what I had on hand because I apparently was not a good planner and didn't I just always think that I have so much of everything in the house and then I realize I didn't but usually I keep the Cool Whip and all the ingredients for this on hand just because it is such a popular dessert and people like it so I would never make this for myself at home because I would probably eat the whole thing um, a little bit at a time of course but still not a good idea all right so there we've got our last layer of brownies and we're going to do our last layer of pudding And if it doesn't go in exactly right, just move it around afterwards. So that's the last half of the pudding. And then we're going to add a little bit more of the Reese's Cups that we had left over. Might as well get all those little scraps in there. And we'll add a little more Butterfingers Bites. And like I said, if you make it a day or two ahead of time, it's no big deal. Flavors can all marinate and it's good. Um, and the last layer is going to be the Cool Whip. And what I do, or whip topping we'll call it, so we're not giving Cool Whip a plug. And you'll notice that I didn't put all the different kinds of candy on there. That's because I want to put a little bit of everything on the top. Um, just so that people can see what it is. Whenever I make chocolates or desserts, I try to put a little something on the top so people have an idea what's inside. So we're going to crumple some of the brownies and we'll put a little bit of each of those, each of the, uh, not each because I used up all the Reese's cups, but we'll put a little bit of the score bars and the Butterfingers so people can kind of see what it is that's going to be waiting, them, waiting for them inside. So we have a little bit, left a little bit of the brownies. In this, we're going to do really small, just so that people can kind of see, like I said, what we've got here. If you've got crumbs that were on here as you were making it, you can just put that. It looks nice. Then we'll add a little bit of the Butterfinger Bites and the Score Bars. Some of these I crushed up, but they don't really crush up on there. They were looked a little bit big in there. So there's that. And then a few of the Toffee Bites. And some people, <laughs> including myself, get a little com confused about trifles and truffles. And what the difference is, um, and the truffle is usually, well, a truffle in regular cooking is that expensive truffle oil um, that comes from the mushrooms and is like $600 for a jar. But um, the truffles that we know as chocolate truffles, which are supposed to be like a high-end truffle um, and a high-end chocolate, those are just like a small chocolate that's very rich and dense. So that's what a truffle is as opposed to a trifle. And... Um, like I said, for a while I got confused too, but this is going to be a trifle, not a truffle. The truffles you're going to eat by themselves probably because they, uh, they're nice and rich. So I just add these, a little bit of the chocolate sprinkles. And sometimes if it's going to be for a kid's party, I will do um, the candy sprinkles, the colored ones. Or I'll do, like I said, the different colors for different holidays. And it's a pretty simple thing to do. And that is our chocolate heaven. And as you can see, we have a few bits of brownies left over that can be my dessert from lunch today. Um, here you can kind of see the different layers a little bit more. And um, like I said, pretty simple to make. And you'll get invited to a lot of parties if you bring good desserts. I can vouch for that. So I hope you enjoyed being with us today and that you give this a try. Make it your own version. Let us know how you did. 
Um, I'd be interested to see what you, um, what you made and what kind of concoctions you did or what combinations you did because sometimes I love hearing different people's ideas for things and then it gives me good ideas too. So hope you enjoyed the show. Here's Chocolate Heaven and um, we'll see you next time. Hope you take time to appreciate the small things.